It comes down to this. Manifestation is twofold. You have to visualize and believe that you can do something. And then you need a plan to get there. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. If you want to be somewhere, something, or someone, but the process of getting there looks a thousand miles long, just get as close as you can. Want to start a fashion label? Borrow your grandmother's sewing machine and make one cool caftan out of old curtains. Want to run a coffee shop? Become a barista. Want to craft your own cheese? Watch YouTube videos to learn how to salt brine and wash some feta. The gist is this. Intentionally place yourself in the proximity of what you'd like to try. Grab coffee with someone who has some experience or advice they're willing to gift you. Search for a little extra time in the margins of your existing responsibilities and moonlight in your next adventure. Open up a savings account that you drip small amounts into whenever you can. Over time, these collective actions, stating the passion, simplifying the plan, and starting the process are what lead to massive change in the direction of your dreams. Change happens when the woo meets the work. This is an excerpt from my book, How Are You Really? And I am so excited about this topic on the show today because I truly believe that for so long, especially female entrepreneurs have been operating out of two camps, the manifestors and the hustlers. And I believe that the real harmony exists when the woo of manifesting meets the work. And I'm going to explain how we can peacefully do this in our lives and in our businesses. So without further ado, let's dive on in. Being Boss Podcast hosted by Emily Thompson brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. Being Boss is an exploration of not only what it means, but what it takes to be boss as a creative business owner, freelancer, or side hustler. Being Boss is another amazing resource for anyone interested in getting inspired and more importantly, getting started. I'm so confident that if you love Gold Digger, you'll love Being Boss. Emily covers topics like releasing the sense of urgency in business, how to empower yourself at work and have a side hustle, and finding your passion and purpose in life using astrology. Listen to Being Boss wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, real talk. What do you think about when you hear the word manifestation? Like, are you one of those people that's all in, you're getting your vision board supplies ready to go? Or are you cringing at like the woo woo ridiculousness of this theory? Now, honestly, I can understand and see both sides. And that's actually a really big reason why my editor, my book editor, Carrie Thornton, decided to work on my book. Because she saw that there was this gap that needed to be filled and she believed that I was the right person to fill it because there are some people who are all about manifesting and they believe their dreams into reality. And then there are others who are all about hustling harder and putting in around the clock work to get to where they want to go. And frankly, I fall somewhere in the middle. Yes, like envision this beautiful, full, robust, vibrant life but also make sure that you have a plan to take action and that you're implementing on what you're dreaming and thinking and manifesting. Now, overall, I think our society as a whole is exhausted by hustle culture and this idea that we have to work harder and wake up earlier and work 24 seven and push yourself and push yourself in order to get the things that you desire. To me, I really believe in working from a place of rest and not stress and looking at more small but consistent steps towards the right things. So maybe the question to begin with is, how do we know what the right things are? And maybe this is where we can marry these two ideas together. That could be where manifestation or specifically visualization comes in. 
So today I really want to show you how I use visualization paired with goal setting in order to reach the life that I picture for myself. Plus, I'm simplifying all of this dream life go-getting with a three-step process to manifesting and taking action towards your juiciest, biggest goals. So buckle up. We're going to get deep into the woo, but I also want to look at tangible ways to step up and do the work in a way that doesn't exhaust you, but instead lights you up. So if you've ever read a book called The Secret, or maybe you've heard of The Law of Attraction, then you might already be familiar with this idea of manifestation. And at its core, manifestation is simply taking our ideas and turning them into reality. And that is something that I can absolutely get behind. But many experts in psychology and neuroscience claim that the notion of manifestation in those books, it's the notion that says that you can get whatever you want as long as you believe in it hard enough, is more pseudoscience than reality. If manifestation really worked in that way, then we'd all be chanting through life like, I want to make a million dollars by next week and doing happy dances or booking a private jet to Jamaica when that money magically hits our bank accounts. But that sort of manifestation, while maybe could work for some, it's not exactly my jam. I don't necessarily believe that whatever it is that we say out loud and repeat in our minds automatically becomes reality without any involvement on our end. I've been talking a lot with my toddler, Coco, about how we are teammates. Like we need to work together if we are trying to get to bed at the end of the night, or if we have this goal that we're going to go on a date and it's going to be this lovely experience, we've got to work together. We can't just have a three-year-old in charge, and sometimes I need her involvement in order to make those visions come to reality. And just in that way that I do as a mom, I really think that we have to look at how we can hold these visions, but how we can back them up with the work. I wanted to kind of bring up something that I've been thinking about when I think about manifesting. Have you ever been on the market for something new in your life, whether you have to buy a new roof for your house or you're buying a new car, or maybe you are thinking about or entertaining the thought of becoming a mother. And all of a sudden you start noticing the thing you've been thinking about. You see children everywhere. There are billboards. There are emails landing in your inbox about becoming a mom, or you see that Chevy Tahoe driving down the street, the one that you've been thinking about, or you notice that Someone down the street just got a new roof and all of a sudden it's like your life is really consumed and you're noticing these things more. I think a lot of times manifestation can work in that way because all of a sudden you're paying closer attention, right? You have this idea, you have this vision, and now you are actively seeking it out or trying to notice it in your life. And whoa, it feels like the universe is bringing you these hints or these clues or these signs. I think it's beautiful. And, you know, I think oftentimes when I think about noticing is whenever I try to get into meditation, I always struggle. I I have a very neurodivergent brain. I really struggle with this idea of meditation because for so long, I just thought like, when you meditate, you need to have no thoughts. And it's actually like, that couldn't be further from the truth. When you meditate, all you need to be doing is noticing your thoughts, paying attention to them, thanking your thoughts. And I think that visualization and manifestation works a lot like that because we become active participants in noticing. We begin paying attention. So how does this work when it comes to our lives? Like, I truly do believe that there is so much power in visualizing a picture of the life that we want or getting ultra specific in what we want our lives to look like like where we live or the type of home we have, our family, our daily routines, our income, our work life, our relationships, our free time. Like I think there's so much power in visualizing it because it wakes us up to, it makes us notice it and pay closer attention. Inside of my book, I actually tell this story about my friend, Brendan Burchard. And he, one time when we were in Puerto Rico, we were meeting for a mastermind. There was a ton of incredible leaders there. And before we kicked off the event, he had us all sit down and close our eyes. And 
He first just had to start from a place of gratitude, envisioning these moments in our life that were transformative, where we felt just like unashamed and happy and alive. And we've all done exercises like that, right? Where we just really like encompass these moments in our life that fill us with gratitude. And after we did that exercise, we did something new that I had never done before. And that was to imagine scenes in our life unfolding, like scenes that we want to have, scenes that we want to live. And the notion here was that in visualizing forward, in visualizing things that hadn't yet happened, but that we wanted to have happen, we would be awake to them when they did happen. And what I thought was fascinating is when I did this exercise, I was not envisioning super elaborate moments. I wasn't envisioning moments that required a passport. Like I was envisioning very, very simple things. I was envisioning being at the lake house with my family, having pancakes on a Saturday morning. And what was so beautiful and what has carried forward from that exercise that I literally did years ago is that every time I'm living out one of those scenes that I envisioned for my life, I'm awake to it. Like Drew will literally look over at me and I'll have tears in my eyes and I'll give him this like little smile. And he knows that I recognize that I am living out that scene, a scene that was once just a vision for my life. I wanted to read you a little bit more from inside of my book because one, I hope you have it and I hope you've enjoyed it. But in case you haven't, um, this is your reminder to grab it. It's called, How Are You Really? And I wanted to read this section because in preparing for today's episode, I thought that this summed it up so well. So it says, I get it. You're already busy and taking a few minutes out of each day to envision your future might sound like an absolute waste of energy. Maybe you've rolled your eyes at every vision throughout this book, every bit of woo-woo that's been accompanied by the work. Maybe you find yourself pushing back on the very idea. Aren't you a grown-up now? Who has the time? Where do you get the mental space? And how can you even begin to dream when your emails keep pinging or your toddler won't stop pretending the kitchen pots are bongo drums? I get it. It feels silly all of this daydreaming. But here's the secret that isn't really a secret. When you take a few minutes to dream, to ask yourself what really matters to you, you get all that time, energy, space back, and then some. Because you're trading in today's worry for tomorrow's wonder. You're replacing the doubt with the dream. When you let yourself relax into what you want next and who you're becoming, you're also acknowledging who you already are. Now, I wanted to include that part because I think a lot of times when it comes to visualizing, we think, what a waste of time. It's never going to happen or my visions never end up looking exactly like I thought they would or I've been disappointed in the past, so why even allow myself to dream that way? But what I love about that last line, when you let yourself relax into what you want next and who you're becoming, you're also acknowledging who you already are. And I love that because I think about that exercise that Brendan led us through, starting with things that we are so grateful for, moments that we've already experienced and just sitting in them for a moment, but then not stopping there and thinking forward, thinking about what we want next. Now, I think that most of us have this general idea of what it is that we want in our lives, right? Maybe we want a couple of kids or a career that we at least semi-enjoy income that provides security for now and the future, maybe the ability to take a vacation every once in a while. And we know for sure that we don't just want things to look good. I think we're getting really honest about the fact that we want things to feel good. Happiness, contentment, freedom, peace, support, growth, or something along those lines. I'm guessing these are the things that we want in our life. But We sometimes walk through life without having a specific, tangible picture of all of the subtleties, like maybe the way we want to dress or the breakfast we want to eat or the way that we want our body to feel or what our ideal family unit would look like. And what I think is so cool is that we have this invitation to get really concrete about our goals. We often do this with things like work 
but we seldom do it for things like our life or our lifestyle, like the thing that the work can afford us. And a really helpful way to do this is to really look at our life and kind of break it down into categories like buckets. We could talk about career, finances, relationship and family, home, health, spirituality, and personal growth. And what I'd encourage us to do is to first write down a picture of what you desire long-term from each of those buckets. And don't be afraid to get super specific here. Like get as specific as humanly possible. And then what I would do is use SMART goals to create a vision for what you want out of each of those buckets on a shorter term timeline. Now, we have talked about SMART goals ad nauseum on this show, but I'm a huge fan of them because they create accountability, but they also give you deadlines. Like they give you a sense of urgency behind what it is that you want. So if you're like, okay, wait, remind me one more time, what is a SMART goal? A SMART goal is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So I kind of want to give you an example of how I've been using SMART goals partnered with manifesting and doing the work in my own life. So this year I was on maternity leave. I kicked off the year on maternity leave. I was in Arizona with my family and every single year I pick out a word of the year. Like what do I want my word to be? And this year the word that I chose was vibrant. Now, if you've ever experienced a postpartum season in your life, you know that energy is likely lacking. You don't really feel at home in your body. You're kind of going through this identity crisis. Your health is kind of in limbo as you're adjusting from pregnancy and recovering from childbirth and getting the hang of nursing. There's a lot going on. And so choosing the word vibrant actually felt like a massive challenge, especially in those sleepless nights. And so while I set that intention of I want to feel vibrant, I didn't just stop there. I mean, I believe that I can wake up every day and say, I want to feel vibrant. I want to feel vibrant. I want to feel vibrant. And sure, maybe that will get me a little bit closer to feeling actually vibrant. But if we're looking at this topic, if we're looking at my approach where the woo meets the work, I knew that I needed to create actual specific goals around this goal of vibrancy, but also bring in and invite in tools and accountability and resources to help partner with this vision. So I did a few things that were super specific. And again, my health journey is my own. Everyone's is going to look different, but I did a metabolic tracker. So I tracked my metabolic health using a thing called Levels that I actually ended up investing in the company because I believe in it so deeply. I used it a year ago when I was trying to conceive Quinn. And then I wanted to do it again in my postpartum period to kind of see how my body was reacting to the foods I was eating. So I did Levels. I ended up hiring a dietitian to get on the phone with me to review my results, to help me create an action plan. I did a bunch of blood work. So I was just kind of testing for my micronutrients, looking at my hormones, looking at different ways that I could support my health. I continued working with a dietitian and getting on the phone with her every other week, tracking the food I was eating, talking about the accountability around exercise. Like there are so many different things I was doing. And then making sure I'm moving my body. So setting movement goals in my Apple Watch, having those reminders pinging when I need to get up, stand up, take deep breaths, all those things. So I wanted to give this example because it's easy to just say, I want to feel vibrant, but what am I actually doing in my life to back up that feeling? I have a really awesome episode on the science behind manifestation with neuroscientist and MD, Dr. Tara Swart, where she talks about how you can't just visualize. You have to actually take steps and create an action plan toward your goal. She explained that visualization actually primes the brain to think in more aspirational ways and even expands the possibility for what we are able to accomplish by simply allowing our minds to go there and consider new levels of what's possible. 
And she talks about how it's up to us to determine the necessary actions that will keep our vision from remaining a mere fantasy. And that instead allows us to bring it into reality. So that's back in episode 425. It's such an eye-opening conversation about manifestation and visualization and the neuroscience of creating the life you want if you want more out of your life. And she actually walks listeners through this amazing exercise at the end of the episode for visualizing what you want out of your life. And trust me when I say it is so transformative. So if anything, go listen to that episode. You can actually find it really easily by going to jennacutcherblog.com slash Tara. And again, listen to that episode and she will absolutely back up what I'm talking about today and explain it probably better than I ever could. Doing good isn't only good for those around us. It's also good for business. We've seen it time and time again. Companies with solid mission statements grow stronger with their customers, employee retention, and their bottom line. Whatever your mission is, HubSpot is on a mission to help your business grow better with a CRM platform that grows with you. HubSpot's easy to use website builder helps you create, manage, and update your business's unique online presence so you can get your mission out to the world quickly and easily. Plus, with seamless plugins that help you track customer activity, you'll know what's clicking and who's not, all from your HubSpot dashboard. Get started and get going for good with HubSpot. Learn how your business can grow better at HubSpot.com. Everything can shift in five days. Are you down to shift with me? Email lists are the key to growing your business online. And if you've listened to even one episode of this podcast, you probably already know this. Getting started though, well, it's awkward and a little scary. And I was there not too long ago. But now I get to pop into a quarter million inboxes every single week because I decided to simply start at zero. Are you starting at zero or maybe restarting an email list that's been collecting virtual dust? Well, I've got a challenge for you. My absolutely free zero to 250 email list challenge. It's just five days with me. All the strategies that you need to get you from zero to 250 subscribers on your email list. There's tutorials. It's a mini course and you can join today at listbuildchallenge.com. You could reach 250 inboxes and more. You've just got to start. Start your five days of the zero to 250 challenge at listbuildchallenge.com. So for me, at the beginning of this year, I created a Pinterest board with all the things that I was hoping for in 2022. And this is a practice I've done every year. I just make a secret board. I go through and I kind of find different images on Pinterest that represent what I want my year to not just look like, but to feel like. So pictures of family, what I hope my work life looks like from the promotion of my book all the way to my health. And I also wanted to make sure that while I was setting these goals or creating these visions, that I had action plans that were very aligned with them so that I was taking steps to make them happen. So if I have all these visions of like being an epic mom, what are the boundaries required in my work to ensure that I can have those sort of memories with my children? What does that look like? Does it look like no work on the weekends, having a cutoff time every night, mapping out specific time where I'm taking time off in the summer, like really just asking myself, okay, yes, I want this vision for my life, but what do I need to do in the form of work or in creating boundaries that protects me to preserve and have those types of memories? And I think one of the most important things that you can do is evaluate if the woo that you're chasing, if those visions that you're chasing are the right visions for you. Like is the vision that you are going after, does it actually fit your life? Like, is it the right time for you? Is it the right season? Is it aligned with what you say you want? Like, does it make sense in how you define success for your life? Or Is it something that you think you should be doing or achieving or going after based on an outside opinion or society telling you that this is what you should want? I think it's really important when we talk about manifestation that we are looking at 
is this my own vision of happiness? Will this make me happy? Because I don't know about you, but I've had visions for my life and I've arrived, like I've achieved that thing and I've gotten there and I've been like, oh, this doesn't feel like I thought it would, or this doesn't feel good, or this wasn't the right thing for me. I remember the first time that I achieved a six-figure income. I literally remember the day that I saw my QuickBooks tell me, you did it. And I remember showering in the shower, washing my hair with Herbal Essence shampoo and thinking, I thought that like the angels would sing like those old commercials, like nothing about my life felt different. In fact, I felt exhausted. I was burnt out. And so I just want to make sure that when we talk about visions that we're being really honest with like, is this my definition of success? Will this actually feel fulfilling? Will it make me happy? I recently took a course called Time Genius by Marie Forleo. I took it during my maternity leave. I have revisited it often. And I remember that she tells a story about a guy who makes his coffee every day and he does a French press. And so it takes him about five minutes. And he had this vision of exercising more, moving his body more. And so he was like, every single day while my brew stews in my French press, I'm going to fit in five minutes of exercise. It was such a tiny way for him to prioritize his health and take baby steps towards this bigger goal while he's already doing something that's a part of his daily routine. Like for me, even when I say I want to feel vibrant, part of that was that I needed to take certain supplements every day. I have thankfully been a person that has never had to be on prescription medication. And so I have always been someone that struggles with consistently taking vitamins or supplements. And so I had to take kind of that step that Marie shared about or the practice that's habit stacking, which I learned about in a book called Atomic Habits by author James Clear and figure out how can I take my supplements while I'm already doing something? How can I just make it a part of a routine that already exists? And habit stacking is literally doing that. It's identifying a current habit that you already do each day and then stacking a new behavior on top of it. And so for me, I actually took an old ice cube tray and put out my daily supplements. So I spent like 20 minutes putting enough supplements in and it was like two weeks worth. And I set that ice cube tray on top of the microwave, which is right next to my Nespresso. So every morning when I make my coffee, I see my supplements right there. I take my supplements. I drink my coffee. So how can you figure out ways that you can work towards your vision that don't feel like a super heavy lift? Like if you have this vision and all of a sudden you like your entire life needs to change in order to make it happen, you're probably not going to follow through. And frankly, you're probably going to be disappointed. And so what is a way that you can take that beautiful vision, that manifestation that you have for your life and say, you know, I have five or 10 or 15 minutes that I can devote to it. Maybe it's an hour once a week or even every other week. Like I can honestly look back at some of my biggest life changes and pinpoint the small daily or even weekly actions that brought me there rather than trying to overhaul my entire life and schedule to make a massive change. I truly believe that like small, tiny actions move us forward and sometimes even more so than giant leaps. It gives us time to acclimate. It gives us time to slow down, to ask ourselves, is this working? Is this what I really want? It makes it way more sustainable, but it also helps us build the belief in ourselves because I don't know about you, but I've been so ashamed of myself in the past for not being able to follow through on something that I said I wanted. And I feel a lot of guilt around things that I haven't followed through on, whether it's a diet or a workout plan or doing this new project, whatever that is. And I found that in order to avoid going on this guilt and shame cycle, I instead have to figure out these micro ways to start making progress so that I can build the belief in myself that yes, I can follow through. Yes, I am capable of keeping this commitment. Yes, I can work towards it. 
So before we wrap this one up, I want to walk through three of the principles of both manifesting and taking action towards your vision of your highest self or the life of your dreams. Are you ready? So one, get clear on what it is that you want. Think about those buckets, like those categories of your life that we mentioned earlier. Create a clear vision on what you want each of those to look and not just look like, but feel like and by when. Get really quiet with yourself, like really consider what it is that you hope and dream and desire for yourself. What feels warm and good when you think about your future? Like what are those future scenes that you want to live and not just experience, but be awake to? What's your pancake morning? And I want for you to get as specific as possible. And I want for you to write it all down. Maybe start with a Pinterest board like I do, but then look at those visions and ask yourself, what is it going to take? Whether it's boundaries or tiny steps of action and get really clear and specific. Number two, create a micro step action plan. Now, I think the part about both manifestation and goal setting that trips people up is the path of getting there, like the actual roadmap to achieving what it is you want. And I think that's why diehard manifestors want so badly to believe that if they just think it hard enough, it will come true. And of course, there is a small bit of truth to that. Like researchers have found that people who are happy and more optimistic generally do attract more opportunities and have better relationships and seem to achieve their goals or manifestations with more ease. Meaning that if you tend to lean toward believing that you'll reach your goals rather than believing that you won't, you actually do have better chances of getting there. And that mindset makes it easier to want to take action towards your dreams too. It comes down to this. Manifestation is twofold. You have to visualize and believe that you can do something and then you need a plan to get there. My two cents is that your plan doesn't need to be intricate or complicated. It just has to be consistent, small steps toward your goal that can that you can feasibly stick to until you get there. So maybe it's an ice cube tray with your supplements next to your coffee maker. Maybe it's doing squats while your tea steeps. Maybe it is waking up five minutes early to jot down your dreams. Maybe it is revisiting that Pinterest board or better yet, making a collage that you put as your phone screen background so that every time you grab your phone, you see that vision that you want for your life and you ask yourself, is what I'm about to do aligned with that vision? whatever it is, create a micro step action plan. And number three, set aside some time each day to visualize that future for yourself. For me, as I went through this year, I was really visualizing that vibrancy, that peaceful feeling, because here's the thing, launching a book takes a ton of work and time and effort. And I have watched so many dear friends launch books and come out on the other side of it feeling so burnt out, feeling frazzled. I've literally watched friends like make themselves sick over their book launch. And I was just not willing to do that. In fact, I just kept telling myself like, I cannot do that for my family. I don't want that. Like it's not worth that to me. And so I walked through this year really visualizing, feeling energized and vibrant and peaceful in the pursuit of getting my book out into the world. And for me, I don't just hold that vision one time at the beginning of the year on January 1st and think, okay, that's going to happen. But I spent time every single day asking myself, how can I prepare? How can I work today so that I can continue this peaceful pursuit How can I pause and get quiet with myself and live out the vision inside of the pages of my book? Whether you just have a few short minutes of laying in bed before starting another full day, or you try to spend time each and every single night focusing on what you envision or want for your life, even if it's just a few minutes, I want for you to learn how to get quiet with yourself so that you can not just hold the vision, but that you can ask yourself, how am I really? How am I doing in this pursuit? Is this pursuit fun? Is it worthwhile? Am I enjoying the ride? Think about the life that you want to live, the life that you desire. 
And really set aside some time today to ask yourself, not just what you want it to look like, but how you want it to feel. And what is one thing that you can do today to get you even an inch closer to it? I love these two principles, manifestation and goal setting. And I don't think that we have to be in one camp or the other. I think there is a beautiful marriage to be had, a beautiful way to make them teammates in pursuit of the lives that we want to live. It's allowing ourselves to dream and visualizing and getting super specific, but it's also letting you be in the driver's seat to help get yourself there. It's getting crystal clear on what you want out of life and then creating that simple plan of actions that allows you to reach that vision on your own terms and timeline. It's leaning into the woo and the work. And honestly, it is the best happy medium I can think of for creating the life and the futures that we actually truly want for ourselves. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. If you haven't yet grabbed my book, How Are You Really? Please do. You can pick it up anywhere books are sold or visit howareyoureallybook.com. That's howareyoureallybook.com. And of course, until next time, Gold Diggers, Keep on digging your biggest goals, but don't just stop at the goal setting. Get out there and be goal getters. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Goal Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com.